Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, that's a walk in the park. Look, all you do is, to be able to determine what is the total pressure inside of a container, well, you take, and by the way, you might have more than one gas in that container, let's say. So if you do, then if you know what the pressure is of one of the gases and the pressure of the other gas, well, the two of them added together, because you can treat all gases ideally, that means the same, you add them together to be able to get the total pressure. So what does that mean? That means the pressure of one gas and another gas and another gas, how many gases that you have, will give you the PT, which is the total pressure inside of that container. So that's Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Now, where does that come into play kind of thing, and what kind of calculations have that? Well, I'll just illustrate by way of a little bit of a, a, a drawing here as to where that could come into a possible calculation. Now, um, by the way, if you want to collect a gas from the decomposition of a chemical or, or like in that previous uh, question where I just said the zinc is placed into hydrochloric acid and hydrogen gas bubbles off, well, how do you collect that gas? Well, okay, if you just had a test tube and you put it over top of a reaction, well, that test tube's got air in it, doesn't it? So the total volume of air that you actually have in there um, gets in the way of collecting pure gas. So what you can do to collect pure gas, almost, is to be able to, well, let's say you take a cylinder and you put it into water and then you bubble away until uh, you, you fill that cylinder with the liquid and then you pull it up almost out of solution, you know that that container or that, that cylinder that you have is going to be now filled with water. Well, if you had a reaction, say, where you were taking potassium uh, chlorate and you're decomposing it with heat to produce potassium chloride and oxygen. Well, look, oxygen gas is coming off. What you can do is you can close that up into a sealed container, heat it up, and then the oxygen gas gets driven off, goes through maybe a tubing underwater here, and then fills the cylinder that has water in it. And when you displace the water, you're leaving yourself with pure gas, right? That's a better way to be able to collect oxygen uh, than just collecting it into uh, a graduated cylinder that doesn't have water in it because there's already air in that cylinder and it gets mixed up with the oxygen. But here's the thing. It still is a fact that you might think, even though that's pure O2 that's in that space right there, remember what we were talking about before in the solutions unit, this water here does evaporate a little bit into that space. And so, that space isn't just oxygen, but it's also water vapor. And if somebody told you that the total pressure in here was 100 torr, and you know that at, say, 25 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 25 torr, then obviously, they say, that if you're asked what the pressure of the oxygen is, you can just say, well, hey, I know that the total pressure, subtracting that one partial pressure, equals the partial pressure of the oxygen at 75 torr. So just to show you that when you're collecting a gas over water, make sure that you check in some kind of book or chart the vapor pressure of water at that temperature to be able to then get what the true value is for the gas that you're collecting in pressure.